Yo, ladies and gents, this is Rob with Signway Specialties. Once again, we are getting into a project. And today, seeing as how I don't have the NVIDIA GeForce recorder, we'll be doing it this way. Plan is, after researching and researching and researching, trying to find a way to get a belt sander that mounts on a table or pedestal or something that has a long enough cut to do, say, flatten out manifolds or flanges is ridiculously expensive. It's like $2,000 to $5,000 to get a decent 20 inch flat spot to sand on. Which, yeah, being a student and a startup business owner, I ain't spending $3,000 for paper with sand glued to it. So, what I've decided to do is I'm going to build one. Literally just got off the lathe just turning down a piece of two inch uh, round bar of aluminum, just basic 6061, putting little lips on the edges so a belt doesn't walk off, but enough flat spot where I can track it. Tracking being the fact that, you know, you gotta get the belt to run a certain direction. So, what I'm gonna do, well, in this one you're gonna notice it's like six inches here. Not technically gonna run a six inch belt, turns out. I'm going to run a four inch probably around 48 inches wide. Generally, this is the gist of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run two inch rectangular channel across here and stop. And the goal is to make this thing pretty powerful, relatively fast, probably, I don't know how many surface feet per minute, but the motor will be a direct drive at 1700 RPMs. So, It'll probably lag a little bit, but I'll probably have a gear, redu gear reduction on it as well. And hopefully I can somehow couple the motor to this, because the motor's got like some stupid weird shaft size, like a .0, or a, a 0 0.555 dimension. So I gotta sit there and shave a half inch hole just to make it work. But that's okay, I'll either ream it or I'll shave it since the drill press is up and running now. Um, yeah, this is generally the idea that we're going to go with. I'm going to get the uh, belting components on beltingonline.com. I'm going to get the steel through onlinemetals.com, which is like <laughs> literally just down the road, like 20 minutes. So, <laughs> yeah, cool AF, right? I to walk right down the street from my online order. It's almost like Amazon, except not as scary to UPS. But, yeah, so... That's gonna happen. I'll show you the rollers real quick. Well, actually, you know what? Let's see the bearings. There we go. Look at that. Half inch. Jesus, God, the neck strap for this camera is terrible. There's the bearings. Half inch bore, two by two plate. Don't know what those are gonna be for yet. I ordered these for as I plan to use them, but I had these laying around. Same bore. So a half inch stainless bar will go through the actual roller. Let me come over here. And yeah. Big fat aluminum. <laughs> yep, the aggravation of the four jaw had to. Small bench lathes don't do too good on three jaws because they don't give you a very good one. The tool marks are a little out of focus. Are okay. I mean, I hit them with a scotch bright pad, one of them guys right there. It turned out not too bad. So I'm going to part it off right there. Part it off in between those two. I'll punch that half inch hole through this thing so that bar can float inside. And then I'll take the uh, boring bar, this little guy here, so you can actually see what it says. There we go. Maybe not. Almost for a second. So I'm going to use this guy, bore out the hole for the uh, bearing that's going to go into it. And those two ends will be done. And yes, this is the 929 that I did the review on, first unboxing. This far out, we're probably, I don't know, 11 and a half inches of stick out. And it chatters only right there to right there. But it doesn't chatter anywhere else figured out that 
needed some different carbide, have a general purpose WNMG insert set up, and it's not made for aluminum. It's, yeah, the rake on it I think is getting all bunched up because the stuff's rolling over into itself on the way out of the uh, chip ejection. So, that's all good. Also got the drill press up and good. Oh yeah. With LED light because we're cheap here. But, yep. We got that set up all done up. So this will do the bore through the middle of the place. Bench grinder set up. Literally just to clean up drill bits. But, yep, that's all set up. But yeah, so back to the moral of the story. The goal is to get this thing built up. Here are the dimensions if it makes any difference to anyone. This is set up for a six six by sixty inch belt, but I need to shorten it down because I'm gonna do like a four by I don't know, forty-eight or something. And yeah, that's going to be the goal for the next thing. This week, can't really do a whole lot. Got exams, two of them. One in a dynamic study and another in a mathematical class. So it's going to be a minute before these things get done. But I want to keep you posted. Just quick vid saying that I'm still alive. And yes, we will be making more cool shit for about a fifth of the cost. And it'll work pretty good. Also, Lincoln MP210 is on its way. Should be here tomorrow. And I'll pick that up. No, I did not get the TIG one pack. I got the aluminum one pack. Local business has use for aluminum jobs. I don't have a use for, for stainless steel welding yet in TIG. And the gun's only like 200 bucks. So, correction. The torch is 200 bucks. So I'll get that without a foot pedal, and what I'll do is I'll just start off slow, and I'll get an amp troll later. That way I can start doing potentially manifolds. I want to try an intake manifold on my own car, but that might be sometime down the road. I might go to junkyard, get one, try to copy it. But other than that, that's really all that's going on right now. There's a little short bit after this where you can actually sit there and see the when I'm getting turned down. And other than that, that's about it. So yeah, stand by. I'll keep you posted for when the belt sander takes progress. It'll be a small mini-series, but we'll get to it. Well, see ya. So this is the follow-up to the lathe actually being used for once. And I had an old video I started on a different channel, finally migrated over and decided I was gonna do my follow-up. It's been I don't know, like a year since I bought this thing, maybe less. I don't know. I really don't freaking know. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you the ups and the downs of this lathe since I started using it. Yes, I painted it. I took it all the way apart. 
And another thing I did was cleaned up a lot of the edges, coated it in light machine oil, got all the factory goop out of it. And check her out now, she looks like a damn hot rod. Yeah, look at all that red. Safety first. So I got it mounted up here, not technically. So some of you are probably gonna wonder, is there bolts down there? There is not. There's none. See that? So that's the next step. I need to get a big ass quarter inch plate of steel, set it up on top of this not quarter inch plate cart and bolt it to it. And then I'll put a nut there, here and here. And then the same thing back there, there and there. That way I can tweak the body of this lathe as I see fit. It does cut on a twist right out of the factory. This cart is nice and flat. For some reason, the lathe definitely cuts on a twist. So up here I'll be touching. As I get closer to the chuck, it does not touch. So what that tells me is that this lathe has a counterclockwise twist as I look at it from this end. That is an issue because you cannot cut anything in a decent precision manner unless this thing is not twisted. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and they all say the same thing. Mount your shit down. I didn't do it, so it kind of causes an issue. But that's okay, because we're gonna do it. Uh, belt life, when I was talking about how skinny it was, yes, it still works. It doesn't actually slip all that much. I actually grabbed hold of this part, two inch diameter aluminum, squeezed the shit out of it with this Brillo pad about half three quarter of my strength and it only slowed down a little bit so that's running pretty good speed right now so it's got some torque it's good the belt's good it's just real thin i think the heat's gonna kill it um the place where it wobbles the most when you get one of these things or the similar 919 i believe this guy right here is going to go like this as you're cutting it is going to wobble. This does not have any damn holding power. If, if you do not need that knob right there to push your tool post in or out of a part, do not keep this top piece. Get a quick change tool mount because this thing is absolutely horrific. I bolted mine down, took the handle out of it, and then I tried to tighten everything, even the Gibbs, to the point where they're not even serviceable at this point. Like, these are just stupid tight, and this thing still bounces all over the place. You can't have any tool stick out. Like, this right here is almost too much, and I'm backed right up against the chamfer on the tool post. So, watch out for that. Uh, handles, took them all off, put some steel ones up on there. Uh, longer handle for the back tailstock. And took all the paint off all the wheels. So the aluminum looks look, looks better to me anyhow. It's used to have black on the interior. Now it's all silver. Painted all the blocks. They look good. Um, another thing. If you can, take off this back guard and cover the motor. As you can see, kind of, right in there, the motor sits there. And it's also got the damn vent screen. Well, what? Look, look where your chips are going. Why would you put it there? Other than that, everything else has been fine. Um, it's kind of lightweight. This guy likes to walk around a little bit when the chips start hitting, and it moves. Um, tailstock. Even though we got a new part, literally, I could I could prove it. The parts in the box. This piece right here was all dickered up, so I got another one. And they said they didn't want the old one back, so I re re-tapped and cleaned up the old one. Turns out that when you put pressure on this with a live center, that's live, that's not the wrong center, this thing gets hard as shit to turn. It's almost like it's stripping the threads. So it becomes a real annoyance because as you put more pressure on it, you got to beat on the back end on that little nut right there going this way to actually loosen it back up so you can actually use it. So those are my quarrels with this thing. With a, For a 110 machine it spools up pretty damn quick actually. So there's not really a problem with like torque or speed. But other than that, that's pretty much it. <laughs>